Hey guys, before we get into the episode here this week, I want to let you know about something we just launched over at SawyerTronMedia.com. It's our very first Kickstarter. It's Steel City Startups. It's a magazine show we want to do. Go find out about it at SteelCitySTartups.com. Back it, tell your friends, and uh, stay tuned here at SawyerTronMedia.com. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 109 Sword here, right here in Pittsburgh, PA, in the studios. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh PA, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> There's Rob De La Creta on the Skype. He's back from fighting giant spiders. Yes. All right. What did you tell everybody I was doing? Apparently, so it was giant spiders. I... You were fighting giant spiders. Oh yes. I mean, I was totally fighting giant spiders. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. They were giant, and um, and they had eight legs, and uh, they gave me these cookies. <laughs> All right, awesome. that that is an epic drop, yeah. and that is a joke for the next show. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people should get it on this mm. one. Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin dot com. He's he's endeavoring to be a professional gamer. No, I'm be- I'm en- endeavoring to. Uh, be a full-time gamer and not have to go to work anymore. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Also with us, join us on the couch for the first time is Brian Snyder, dab of check, dab of tech. Wow. Wow. Dab of check. <laughs> You're check- yeah. Czechoslovakian, uh, former cord cutter, enjoying that uh, cable, that fine, fine cable. Wait, tell them what you told us. Tell them what you told us. <laughs> Uh, the, the the fact it's it, it's like losing your virginity all over again. It's just oh, so much <laughs> After ten years of no cable, uh, finally got the uh, cable hookup. My God, so many channels, <laughs> so much crap television. It's yeah. like heroin. They give it to you for free, and you just can't stop. So, so have you like this rediscovered like like uh, like reality TV and and uh, all that kind of stuff? Oh, it's it's absolutely insane. Like, they have shows for everything. I, we need our own show, like, on TV. Like, we could do better than that. <laughs> My God, this stuff is crap. We've got gypsies. We, we've got, like, just people randomly fighting. It's, it's insane. I, I, it's just too much for me. Too much. I, I think my favorite thing to come out of this was, uh, I think it was your, your better half posted on Facebook about you um, putting the cord back together after cutting it. And uh, something like, oh, God, we have 116 channels. It's amazing. But I still only find myself watching the same three history, discovery, learning channel. (laughs) (laughs) I watched a a thing about learning to become a sniper and these snipers. I want to be a sniper. (laughs) After watching that show, I was like... I'm going to take my BB gun and become a sniper. I don't know what I'm going <laughs> to snipe, <baby> gun. <laughs> but I'm going to snipe something because I'm all juiced up on sniper stuff. <laughs> Do you have neighbors? You go. Yeah, I like snipe my them. Just, just. Uh, we have cats that we don't like. Just peg them in the ass. Yeah. Well, Wait wow. for a cat to walk through the neighborhood and be like, pink. Well, that's my way of having. <laughs> It's just, it's insane. Although we do tend to watch the same, like, we 10 do, channels. Uh, we do not condone shooting no, cats in the ass with cats. a BB gun. Yes. No, yes. no, no animal violence. Don't, don't do that. that. It's bad. I have a garage I don't like, which, or uh, a shed I don't like, which will probably become a good target. Nice. Wow. But, yeah, well, it, on that note, this is the Awesome Cast, guys. Find out more about us at awesomecast.com. Contact at awesomecast.com if you want to chime in. Or hit us on Twitter at awesomecast. We're on Facebook. We're on Google Plus as well. Uh, tag your comments about this show with the uh, hashtag AC109 so we can keep track of them and see what's going on. Um, and uh, also check us out. We're here live as we are well, right now, unless you're watching us later. Alive.circuitronmedia.com every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. And you can chime in on the chat room and all that stuff. And we're also what? on new stream, Justin TV, we're stuff here. like that. Exactly, exactly. We're exactly. Here. Tuesdays. Except for like three a year. Yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. <clears throat> or when I'm morbidly sick or and I can't get you to do it. Which has never happened. It happened like once. No, it didn't. It happened once on the Mayhem show, I think. No, the only time it didn't happen, you had to leave town. Yeah, there's that. And you had all of the equipment with you. Yeah, that's right. That's why it didn't happen. That's right. 
<laughs> but the other time you were sick, I covered for you. Exactly. Exactly. I sat in your chair. I did your job. I was all like, switch, switch, switch cameras. Yep. DJ Chachi. Because that's DJ what it, that's what it sounds like. Pretty much, pretty much. There's a lot of buttons and knobbies over here. Yeah, um, so we had some uh, fan uh, submitted stuff this week from uh, a few of our regular contributors. Uh, Fuzzwad, Frank Chenoweth, who was on last week, by the way. Chenoweth! <laughs> exactly. He's actually out uh, in international waters right now, I believe, uh, on a cruise. So that's interesting. Uh, the void of technology, or is it just over expensive technology out there with cruises? I think it's over expensive. Is it so, extremely like, expensive? Pro- prohibitively expensive technologies. So yeah, yeah. Plus he's too busy eating. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, so laughs> he so you get like six lobster tails just because you can. Yeah. That was a whole thing. Uh, but he, he uh, dropped us a few lines about uh, Android this week. Um, some some news here about Verizon Galaxy Nexus is receiving an OTA update. Uh, he says uh, this because of this, I'll be rooting and installing Jelly Bean after vacation, and he'll uh, get an up to it update to us shortly about how that goes. Um, there, oh, that thing's not working. Um, that's nice. I mean, that's <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Rob sent me a picture. Oh. <laughs> Um, also, he it says was, it was a ahead. picture of a guy holding a baby inside of a casserole dish next to the oven, and it said, "Our friend came over to babysit. I got home. This was my background. Like the baby was in the casserole dish. He had the lid and was near the open oven. So it was choking that he was baking their baby. I love that you have to explain. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no babies were harmed. No babies were harmed in the no making. No babies were harmed in the making of this funny photograph on the internet. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Are we done? Are yes, we good? No. Are we good? Maybe. All right. Probably not. Um, he also. He, we, we were talking uh, when we were uh, visiting last week. We did, there was a barbecue at his place, and we were hanging out, uh, talking video game stuff and whatnot. Hmm. Um, and he sent this. We. I was telling him. So you showed me his. What did he got? Like a Galaxy S something yeah. or other. And it's. And I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing. I'm kind of been, you know, the the not the oh, ice cream sandwich, nice. jelly bean stuff. I think it's been really interested. And he said uh, that after like more people see this video, probably more of them are going to want Google phones. This voice search stuff they have going on is really kind of interesting. Uh, they've been doing a lot of uh, uh, comparisons between Siri and it. Uh, this Google uh, is this the Google Now service, I think. And uh, and you see in the, in the video there, it's they're asking it. We'll see, it, it, like I think you're asking him, mo- how how old is the Earth? I mean, and this this is stuff they're drawn from Wikipedia, probably also from uh, what's that Wolfram Alpha that we already have on Siri and stuff like that. And we'll see what OS six does in comparison. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. Is this a big feature now, Don Chachi? Is, is, I don't even, you're not even going to be in the running for Jelly Bean on this thing, are you? No. On your G2? No. So, but is that something that might keep you in on the Google side of things instead of swapping over to the iPhone? Mm, probably not. Have you Have you seen a lot of it? No. No? <laughs> this is the service that, like, will take, like, it's a, it's like the Siri, but it'll, it's, what do they call it, semantic search, where it will, like, tell you. You know, like, you know, the, the biggest example is, like, they'll tell you how long it takes you to get to work and when you should leave and stuff like that. So I guess... I know when to go to work. You know when to go to work. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Rob, have you been seeing much about the new Google voice search? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been paying any attention at all because it still sucks. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's pretty it's much it. It's not Siri. Okay. Apple did it yeah. right. Which Did means, they? which means, it's going to take everyone another twelve of tries to get it even close. Mm-hmm. And, and we'll have to see what this looks like when it actually gets out in the wild, and you know, the whole seven percent of people get this. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the problem. Like people complain about Siri and 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 what what you know it's doing in the real world because they unveil that thing and like a mil- you know millions of people buy a new iPhone to have Siri. You and know? none of them are using it. That's the best part. <laughs> I use it all the time. Do you know? Yeah, I use Siri. It tell me how great I am. Okay, so first of all, Siri, as far as like searching for stuff, has gone downhill since I bought my phone in January. It originally like it really did do really well, but now I'm getting a lot of like non hits. The mm-hmm. service isn't available. That sort of thing. What I use Siri for is to do my text messaging. Okay. Uh, anything like if I'm in the car 
like those sort of commands, it works really well. And I use it all the time to send text messages or tweets or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and it, it works really well. And I, that's what I use it for 95% of the time. Me, I, you know, what I end up using it for more often than not is, uh, yeah, I tried doing it for text, but it seemed like I was fixing stuff more than anything. And I got tired of doing that on the parkway. Um, but uh, then you might as well just be texting at that point, right? Um, but really, it's like, hey, set an alarm for this time. Hey, set a timer for this thing so I can kind of, you know, as I go through the day, I'm just like, okay, I want to spend a half an hour on this project. I want to take a nap for, you know, this amount of time, you know, or I want to do this, you know. And that that's really the function I get, you know, yeah, uh, more I, than anything. There's usually nobody else in the car when I do this, so mm -hmm. I speak very I speak a lot slower, and I ensure to enunciate my words and that a lot seems better. To, that seems and to I get a yeah. very high, <laughs> I get a very high uh, hit rate, and I don't have to fix many things. That's good. And That's you can, good. I, and it even figures out when you, because I always say like period, question mark, like all those key commands mm -hmm. does mm -hmm. really well. See, the, but I've been using other stuff too. Like I've been using like for my navigation, I'm using Waze. That's why I'm not quite so excited about Apple's navigation because I feel like Waze is already doing that, and it has the you know I can it has a proximity sensor that will bring up the voice uh, commands, and I can say, "Hey, report uh, you know police on the side of the road or or a construction yeah. or bad traffic or something like that." And it's getting better about <laughs> when you pass something and it'll pop something up and ask if a, a car is still there on the side of the road, for instance, and can say, no, it's not. Um, so, but granted, right off the gate, if, if Apple's going to be doing crowdsource traffic, they're going to be better. They're probably yeah. going to be more accurate. But this, I feel, already has a nice start to it. So I, 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 I don't compare when it come out, but I think I'm sticking with Waze for the most part. It's the most fun to use, and it feels like a real GPS so far. So, um got my other point so we'll go to the next story uh another one from frank here uh one last one about android because a lot of, you know we talk about like uh, uh you know blackberries and there's people that still have blackberries you know we know a couple that are just like dedicated <laughs> to their blackberries and that keyboard and everything i was actually uh taking a ride up to cleveland or back from cleveland with somebody that has a blackberry on on cricket and he was just i've never seen anybody type that fast on the phone those the people that are dedicated their blackberries there's a reason I there's, love my BlackBerry. <laughs> but it, like, it's, it's it's insane. Good. Are you a good typer on there? I used to use my BlackBerry instead of typing on a on my laptop because I could send email faster on my BlackBerry than I could on my laptop. That's that's amazing. I and then you get to the point. Do not do this. This never happened. But I could actually type one handed and drive and not look at my keyboard. Yeah, I used to do that too. Yeah, I mean it just. I, <sighs> I like the, I've gotten used to the, the soft keyboard on the iPhone. It works really well. Um, if I do something again quickly or I need something to that effect, I use Siri and it, it that's how I keep up the speed. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the BlackBerry, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. I've worn out keyboards. I've worn out balls. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's easy. laughs> <laughs> with the high five for those of you listening that was a high five you just used to go through balls about every six months oh man uh, well <laughs> oh this last one frank, which is true so. this last one frank drops he asked would this be considered a blackberry ice cream sundae i guess they're targeting old in print or in brackets people that really enjoy only have uh understanding for blackberries with this one uh samsung is inv unveiling a new galaxy uh, with a full QWERTY keyboard. And he, this isn't the first I've seen like this, though. Because, um, I mean, a lot of Androids, there's a lot of Androids like this with the smaller screen, yeah. the little keyboard. Um, it looks like a, like a Palm Cree. Yeah, it does in the long run. And it's running um, it's running Ice Cream Sandwich, so it's at least in the newer class of you'll get all the features. Uh, but it's only, yeah, like a 320 by 240 QVGA display. Like, it feels like a feature phone by the looks of it. Um, it's got a two megapixel rear facing camera. So, I mean, this is, this is going to be a low end kind of one. Definitely. So they got a game hub. They have, uh, uh, and some say, yeah, well, yeah. And Samsung has their own thing for this, uh, chat on service, uh, which is going to be preloaded, um, as well, which it says that they're going to be take on rim and their, uh, BBM service with this. But it, that's one of those things like Samsung's been doing these services that are like Samsung, the Samsung phones. And I can't see that taking off like samsung's doing well 
but you really have like a mass of people that just have, oh, you're a Samsung guy too, you know, amongst like a circle of friends like you have with an Apple or just Android in general. You know, I, I don't really see it. No, I think that was popular. BBM is also another awesome application that mm -hmm. used all the time. Uh, but, you know, that was because there were millions of people that had BlackBerry at the time. And, you know, it was kind of its own network now that probably the majority of them have left that service. It's less appealing. Uh, but those sort of services where um, you don't necessarily need to worry about stuff being on the internet it's point to point that sort of thing mm -hmm. uh it, it works out really well yeah and it's a it's a security in the long run yeah. too uh for, for the businesses so um we had one last one aj dropped this uh, a little earlier today um he remember there was the uh, the, the blackouts uh with amazon amazon services from the power outage uh yeah. it took down tumblr uh netflix pinterest instagram uh so he had some thoughts of it and it turned into a giant blog post apparently um over at his blog i'll plug it here virtualpotholes.com remember he did actually buy the dot com so go check that out if you want to see some more uh thoughts what he has but he had a few points that came out of this. Uh, he says, uh, Amazon, come on, a power outage should not affect your data center. It's a shame if it does. You're not a shoelace organization. You're official. You're you're effectively the face of the cloud of cloud computing. Eh? Yeah, I agree with that. It, it feels like one power outage for your one data center shouldn't shouldn't kill the whole thing, right? There should be redundancies, like just for them. Uh, second point, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Instagram should be publicly shamed for their outages. This is now two times Amazon has had issues with their data center. Uh, maybe you should have learned the first time. It was just over a year ago. Pay, pay for the second zone. You're choosing angering your customers over paying for reliability. Not a smart decision. It's not like these guys aren't making money, especially Instagram at this point. Well, I think, uh, so point counterpoint, mm -hmm. uh, if you are instagram hypothetically and you want to learn a lesson from amazon going down who else are you going to go to it's true well google supposedly got a lot of cloud services coming out rack space oh google, google like stack. their data centers have never gone down ever yeah, yeah yeah right yeah so the thing is like good luck finding a host that will actually offer you 100 percent uptime because you can mm -hmm. it's 99.99 percent uptime which means you can actually be down for a couple days out of the year because mm -hmm. things happen there should be redundancies but at the same time these are systems depending on systems depending on systems that are all run by different companies. Mm -hmm. Even though Amazon, you know, suffered a blow, they suffered a blow because they were depending on perhaps redundant power systems from their power supplier. So maybe it was their power supplier that died out in that. Yeah, I mean, there's out. a large point of this problem that yeah. like nobody except for Amazon will know anything about. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, the the idea that Amazon is just like has the same sort of problems that yeah, we do when the power goes out, which is, you know, I got to call up Duquesne Lights, even the power is going to come back on. It's a much bigger problem than that. It's exceptionally more complicated. Um, and the, the smart thing to learn from this is that no matter what you want to call it, cloud computing still comes down to a server in a room. Mm -hmm. And that server in a room is subject to all of the problems of technology. So these things will break sometimes. Exactly. And it's about like having a majority of time. Uh, he has a last point with Netflix and every other web application owner needs to take a strong look at internally at what constitutes their service, in quotes. Uh, what is the minimum re minimum required to provide 80% of service? What are the critical parts of your service? In this case, it's video streaming and search. The recommendations and sharing portions are nice, but not required to users for search. Uh, if you can't search, you can't find a movie you want, uh, what makes your service? I think this is referring to the point where with Netflix, it wasn't the it's the service that went down, uh, as in if I was streaming a movie already and the, everything went down, nothing changed for me. It was the ability to find and see the recommendations and actually get to the movies if you were stepping into Netflix during the outage. Mm -hmm. like that front end is what went down with these servers. Um, so I guess he's saying, you know, what is, you know, the, the, what is the most important part of that so uh, i don't know so interesting. and the other thing to consider yeah. is that a lot of a lot of the data centers are sort of leaning on the ideas of yesteryear's data centers which are that there is this 99 percent uptime thing and you should only be able to you know only have to worry about covering a certain uh point of downtime just how netflix might look at like all of their hosting options and say you know amazon s3 makes the most sense it costs x amount of dollars and all this stuff and nobody is stepping ahead and saying, like, well, maybe 
the complete lack of scalability of our web application is no longer acceptable. Mm. Looking at you, Tumblr. Um, or that, like, you know, <laughs> features went down. That was acceptable for a lot of reasons. That was acceptable for a lot of time reasons, financial reasons, logistical reasons, strategical reasons. That's fine. But right now, that's fine. At what point does that change wherein, like, we're still sitting in this weird portion where um, internet as a service and application as a service is still broken in that these things can happen and something that you're currently paying for, you will not receive and there's no compensation for that. Like, if my, if I have a problem with my data server in Florida or whatever, and it goes down, I get refunded for the time that my server is down. Yeah. Because that's the best they can do. Yeah, yeah, it, that, that happened to us. I, it, it was refunded. You know, there was we had to deal with the damage on, hey, we weren't around for a couple of days or off, off and on uh, mm-hmm. or limping on the Internet. But, you know, right. We but got so our, say, you know, yeah. say you run a web application and you and it goes down every once in a while. Right now, that's kind of acceptable. Tumblr, Tumblr's gotten a lot better, but I would say the amount of time that you can access Tumblr in, say, like a six-month period is probably four days total, maybe. If you count, like, hours in the middle of the night, they're doing maintenance or anything, which sounds preposterous considering how much technology is available and all that stuff, and it goes back to the whole systems thing. But it's like, we're okay with this because there's no alternative to Tumblr and there realistically is no alternative to S3 because nobody's doing anything better. And all this goes back into the the tech mindset, which is like, why do you use Facebook? Well, because it's what everybody else is using. That doesn't make it good or right. It's just what's happened. It's a trend. Yeah, it's a trend. So at what point does tech dependability become an actual thing to the point where, you know, you think of a service that you can actually depend on 100% of the time, I mean, it's kind of, come to think of it, it's kind of hard to come by. You're like, even a hospital will turn you away if they have to. You know? Yeah. You know, the, the point is, is that the reason these companies went down, especially with the Amazon, is they chose to go down. There are options available to yep. every uh, company there that uh, essentially provides them with multiple zones, with multiple, you know, there's, there's a number of redundancies. There is most likely an executive or someone at that point that said, look, here's what's going to cost to be 100% reliable. That technology does exist. Uh, They chose, somebody chose to say, look, and probably for very good monetary reasons, nah, we'll we'll, we'll chance it. Uh, You know, with the Amazon thing, yeah, their data center went down. There were a number of cascading failures that had to occur for that to occur. Unfortunately for Amazon, they also had a human error happen right before that as well. Uh, somebody uh, made a networking mistake, which shifted a, no- a bunch of traffic onto a hardware device that couldn't handle the traffic. Uh, so they, they, it was so many things that occurred all at that same point in time. Like you probably couldn't pick a worse, you know, coincidence of human error and technology failures and infrastructure failures all at the same time. Um, but these companies are making those decisions. If they're not, you know, that that shame on them. These these people are smart. You know, the great thing about, you know, Netflix and all of these other services, when those services go down, nobody is going to die. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it is not the but, end of the world. Uh, after working in healthcare for 12 years, I can tell you that, you know, you don't always have able to make the best decisions, but you, you do the best you can and, you know, try to get as much uh, availability as you can. But somewhere along the line, somebody made uh, the conscious decision to say, no, we're not going to be 100% mm-hmm. you know, available and we'll take our chances. And that seemed to be the argument the first time around, too, when the, yeah. when this came up. It was like, well, you guys didn't pay for the extra stuff, so... It's there. I mean, maybe, maybe twice now, maybe <clears throat> they will, and, you know... And, and most, of the, most of the services affected are free. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, your worst offender supported it best, but free. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Your be- your your worst offender then would be Netflix, which I do pay right. for. You know, and it stinks yeah. to have it have it go down on a Friday or a Saturday night because it's like, well, that's what I expected to do. Right. And so, do you think like if Netflix came to its customers and said, <clears throat> "We're going to charge you fourteen ninety nine a month or whatever it is to have pretty good reliability. We'll call it ninety six point nine nine percent uptime. All of your stuff will always be available. You will never have trouble getting to Netflix." For $25 a month, we will guarantee 100% availability all of the time. 
you know how many people would actually pay that money? Yeah, no, no. exactly, exactly. And, and even as it is, uh, they, they're, uh, they, they've been in the past been to the point where uh, if they have downtime, say, on a Friday night, Saturday night, and they see that you ping their server and didn't get, get your thing, uh, you would actually get a credit uh, right. for, for a portion of your, like, you know, maybe like 25% of your what you pay a month, you know, which isn't much for seven, eight bucks a month, but still. That's something, and it's a nice. I mean, that's a big chunk of change out of their pocket when they hit everybody that hits up on a Friday night. So, and it's a good faith for their customers. So it's like, well, at least you know, I see they're doing something. So, and it's technology, and hopefully, most people. I know a lot of people say I want it to work. You know, uh, more than anything. But you know, this is still a growing pain. This is all still new technologies. So, speaking of new technologies, and oh, I should have brought the old one down here for this story. Uh, Furby's coming back. Yeah. With, uh, go, Furby's, <laughs> go. LCD eyes and rubber ears. Yeah, it's freaky in this picture. If I'm, you're on the video, <laughs> it's holy crap. I'm buying one. I, I, think, I, I think I am, too. I think we're all going to buy Furby's. <laughs> is there a price point it on is, this yet? It's, um, it's scary. It, it's surprised $60. Eye. $60 a pop here. It's shocked eye Nick Cage. <laughs> as a furry you, you know what that means if you're on the pre-show so I had actually a video of a guy I guess is the sen senior engineer for Hasbro wow those are crazy eyes <laughs> holy hell yeah, they're really, really special. <laughs> oh, that's freaky so when this thing wakes up oh and that's the other thing about it waking up it doesn't go to sleep yeah there's no power button the Furby is now an always on application good the Furby is the now Furby has 100% uptime <laughs> <laughs> As long as you remember to change the batteries. It will also include, a, there will be a uh, Furby iOS app, which sends inaudible sound cues to the toy. Oh, uh, it will talk to, it will discern the Furby's language and respond uh, to other Furbies. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, ability to communicate. Yeah. Well, the only ones that we're able to communicate, of course. And here, actually, there's the app. There you go. That is if you're honest, <laughs> yeah. All those eyes are freaky. Yeah, Those eyes are so but, freaky. I think my my overall feelings about the Furby because I mean the Furby was a really cool thing back when it was like the cool thing because there was nothing else like it. But now, like I have a feeling the way the way the young kids are these days, if they have an op an option between an iPad app that they can interact with and a furry little thing that takes AA batteries, I think I think the iPad's going to win. And there's, I mean, and, and if you looked on the internet, there's a pretty good community around the old ones. People are still finding these, uh, you know, to, to use them and hack them in some points. There's stuff mm -hmm. like the Furby autopsy. Um, so you can see what actually works with this thing. I mean, this is 1998 technology, I believe. So, you know, compared to today, some of the stuff, you know, uh, but, but that's, I, I think it's tremendous that it's coming back. I think it's long overdue. Furby. I guess they had some random, like, I think they had like a Furby cat or something in there. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, you look at this thing. This thing sitting beside my, uh, my Mac upstairs when I edit this show late Tuesday nights and I wake up once in a while, I accidentally bump it and wake it up and scares the crap out of me at two in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so scary Furby. We're all buying one this Christmas, right? No, I'll wait. No. I'll wait until uh, they drop. I'm not paying sixty dollars for a Furby. I'll pay sixty dollars for a Furby. I'm not. I for an update. Well, how much were Furbies the first time around? I don't know. I didn't buy one when they were brand new. My my mother's bought like three of them. <laughs> I she's like is Care Bears and Furby. I don't know. She's like nuts about all of them. Huh. Yeah. I'm gonna wait for when they bring out my buddy back. I wonder if I can get a harness. Teddy, Teddy Ruxpin. I wonder if Teddy Ruxpin. Teddy Ruxpin. Can you imagine like the new Teddy Ruxpin? He's basically a furry iPod. <laughs> That'll be amazing. <laughs> Plug me in, friend. Exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so another consumer kind of I, stuff. I want to know but, if yeah. I can get a backpack harness for the Furby. Why? It's just a little thing. I just want to strap him to like my backpack okay. strap. That way he can just ride along. I don't have to carry him. He just rides along. <laughs> Seeing what Ooh, you see, yeah. reacting to everything shoulder? around you. Put him on your shoulder. Right. You could just like yep. be like a parrot. Yeah. Furby parrot. There you go. What are we awesome. talking about now? Um, how about Time Warner? Would you, yeah. Chachi, let me ask you this. Uh, let's say Comcast came to you and says, I will take $5 off your cable bill and your internet bill. I, I know that response is already there. Pretend I didn't tell you the story already. Okay. Uh, and just, okay, we'll take this to Brian because he hasn't heard the story yet. <laughs> Brian? 
you're on Comcast. What if I take $5 off your Comcast bill and you have a five gigabyte cat? Yeah, that's not going to last. <laughs> well, that's between what time... the well, Between the Netflix and <laughs> I forget what my average is. I mean, it's not a lot. Like, I'm not close to my 250, you know, I, I keep track of it on my router. But, I mean, it, it can be fairly significant based on, you know, what I'm doing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Five, five gigs not going to last very long. No. Well, Time Warner thinks it's a good idea, apparently. Of course they do. Uh, they're expanding their usage-based billing in Texas. They are offering a $5 credit if you join. Uh, if you volunteer for this, this is opt-in. They're calling it an essentials package. Uh, it's available to customers in Austin, Dallas, El Paso, Waco, Temple, Killeen, Killeen? Uh, Kerrville, and Golden Triangle in Texas. Um, and, yeah, it, it's, it's going to be... They'll give you five gigabytes cap, and it's going to be a dollar for each additional gigabyte up to a maximum of $25 if you go over. So you're volunteering to shoehorn yourself into this. Now, if they offered it for $5, that would be very interesting. It would. I mean, well, think because about Because you could get multiple lines. And I'm sure they're still around. Remember, there was always like the Access 995. There's always yeah. like the really cheap dial-up plans. They're yep. probably still out there. Chachi's very familiar with this. Um... The, for the grant, my grandfather was on one for the longest time because he's like, I just do email, yeah. you know. And, and this seems like the kind of thing of I just get on to check my email and check my Facebook, and there's no way I would use five gigabytes a month, ideally, you know, for for grandma to be on the internet, you know. If you're uh, already a Time Warner like TV subscriber, and they came to you and said, Hey, for five or ten bucks a month, we'll give you five gigs, you know, even if it's a slower speed, for those, you know, for people like that. No problem. I, I think that could potentially be a good value until, you know, your whoever that is discovers Netflix or has a PS3 or Xbox exactly, 360. Exactly, exactly. Then, but then you're stuck with it, you know? You know or, 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 you know, can you just jump back up to the unlimited, unlimited plan? That'll probably cost you twice as much, but I'm not I'm not really the, the, the person for that because I actually just gave Comcast 10 extra bucks a month to boost up my speed. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I have to check. I think the FIO stuff kicked in. I think I, I because I think I was like upgraded okay. into that like automatically. So they're doing like the 50 down, 25 up on That's my right. tier. Yeah, the, the, the quantum. <laughs> Is that what they're calling it? <laughs> right. no, no. They have commercials all over the place yeah. for this, I take it. Yeah. I've, yeah. Yeah. And Comcast is upgrading their subscribers. If you're on the blast internet, which essentially right now is about <laughs> 30 down, five up, that gets boosted up to 50 down. Um, and then if you're on the extreme 50, uh, you get 105. And if you were on the 105 megabit plan, your plan actually will get discounted. Nice. Uh, so nice. they're going to give you some money back for that. Good, good. Uh, Rob, what do you think of this whole thing Time Warner's doing? Who are they aiming at? I have no idea who they're aiming at. <laughs> <laughs> People who don't know what data is? And apparently. It, 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 sounds like, it sounds like there's some salesperson, like when you call in and call customer super, uh, service for your random thing to pay your bill or whatever, they say, hey, you know, we can give you five bucks off if you go with this essentials plan. And, and I'm sure they're explaining it and completely in detail so you know exactly what's going to happen. When you're yeah, it, I mean, it really does feel like a really terrible marketing marketing idea that they're going to try and riff to you while you're on the phone. Yeah, and maybe like steal you out as a customer and say like, you know what, I can save you an extra few bucks if you're if you want to sign up for this cap thing. And I, like, if you were to talk to my parents about that, they would probably sign up for it. And then and then they wonder, you know, using the internet as they usually do, and wonder why their bill is actually twenty dollars more expensive because they hit their cap upon a cap with this mm -hmm. so really it's just like a twenty dollar more unlimited plan right right so it's weird and they're testing it out it's like it's like they're like how can we fool a customer and let's start with texas you know yeah. there's mm -hmm. four people in texas i mean at least it's not nebraska right well that's yeah. what they tried to do the usage based one too in texas uh i thought it was time warner they they charged you per <laughs> megabyte or whatever it was. Like and straight up per megabyte. Yeah, yeah it, was like a it was like a utility-based model. I thought yeah, they did that yeah. in Texas as and well. And even that was often because they're like, oh, you want to try this service. Yeah. Well, again, who's going to do that when you're like, well, you already give me unlimited. So, yeah. you know, versus, you know, AT&T just says, hey, unlimited means this now. and You're going to get a text every month because you used because you actually use your phone. Two months in a row now. I, Two months in a row. I'm, I'm telling you, after dealing with uh, both. Verizon and Comcast in the last 30 days that 
the salespeople will do whatever it takes to make the sale because that's what they get paid on. And they will, oh, tell, yeah. oh, they yeah. will absolutely tell you something so atrociously wrong mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. just to get you to sign whatever it is that it is just, it's unfair. It's unfair for people who I'm fortunate enough to be, you know, educated in how this stuff works. Listen. And if I'm not, it is, it, I feel so bad. For a time I worked for a telemarketer and I was so bad at selling magazine subscriptions I went to verification. And then they had Verizon DSL. This is around 2001 or two, I think. And, uh, and, and that was like, I was good for it for, I was like one of the top guys for like two or three weeks. And then we started getting all these leads that were all didn't really speak English. And I don't know what the internet is cause I'm too old. Um, and they were supposed to be vetted, of course, as they told us. Uh, th there were people getting sales off that. And I guarantee you those people at the top of that leaderboard talked grandma into it. Yeah. And grandma had no idea what she was signing up for. And we'll see where that sale went, you know. Um, that's that's what a lot of these guys operate on, you know. Why why do I need fast? Well, it's faster. It's like, but I, can, but I just check my email. It's like, but yeah. it's, uh, you'll get your email faster, lady. You know, I mean, it's it's bad. And, and, and I know Verizon, yeah, you know, as much as I, I talk up their FIO service, just changing something on my cable subscription was always horrible. Oh. And I'd, I'd end up with HBO when I canceled something, <laughs> you know, and not even with three months free that they always swindle you into. You know, I got stuck with Showtime without wanting it for a year. Um, it, it was horrible, but their customer service is amazing. You know, I had really good experiences there. It's just those sales guys, those salespeople are always trying to keep yeah. you on or, or tag something in because they get a commission, you know? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's just ridiculous and you have to watch your ass for it. Yeah, you do because, well, what's the blast internet? Ah, it's, it's a little fast. It's blast. It's I mean, more it's fun. Better. It's like, more fun. That's what the person literally said to me. They're like, I'm not exactly sure. It's just blast internet. It, it, it's, it's, <laughs> See, it's they more. don't even know. They like, don't even know. I was like, are you He's, serious? See, they're not technical people or they'd be in customer service. Uh, and so instead of they're selling know. it to you, I know you, you gotta know. And that's dependent on their trainings and they're cutting, you know, cutting whatever on their end to, to, to beat their goals financially. So, um, do we want to talk about the app updates crashing? No, no. no. I mean, that's crash and burn. Yeah, the, the, there was a DRM issue, and uh, I mean, the big thing is, it, it, since everybody one started everything that didn't work, um, like I think like Instapaper was one of them, uh, a couple other services, and this is on the Mac App Store. Um, they 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 eliminated everything and dropped it to a previous version, so it doesn't affect the ratings so harshly. So uh, I, I think this is something that's going to happen. It's the Fair Play DRM that I guess failed on it. Uh, so you know we'll see if this happens again because I mean if, if it's persistent, like we're seeing with the Amazon issues, yeah. uh, then people are going to think twice about it and say, well, hey, that 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 always crashes. Why do I want to get my stuff through there? You know. Um, let's get that one. Let's go to uh, let's talk about Kickstarter. There's a couple things on Kickstarter we want to talk about. One's up uh, Chachi's Alley. Um, did, did we figure out how to say this one? Is it the oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah? So, of course, this is a story that was running on insertcointobegin.com. Tell us about the oh, yeah. Uh, first off, I would just like to say I've been refreshing the page since the beginning of the show. <laughs> No, I'm not kidding. You can ask Brian. Okay, okay. Yes. I'm sitting here with my finger on F5. I'm refreshing Another the page. Fun. All right? Yeah. The numbers keep going up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. What oh, yeah is, is a, it's a Kickstarter project that is looking to put a new console in people's living rooms. And if you're unfamiliar with video games or the market or any anything like that it's been pretty much tightened down mm -hmm. between nintendo playstation and microsoft you have to be big in order to get yeah. into the space yeah you're you're not just gonna waltz into the space until now i uh, it these people uh, the OEA company is started today they're at a little over 12 hours of this kickstarter and they're at hold on let me refresh it's gained sixty thousand dollars since I started refreshing it at the beginning of the show. What's it up to now? They're up to one million four hundred eighty-six thousand seven hundred fifty-six dollars of their nine hundred six thousand since I started playing this video. Yes. 
of their and that's of their nine hundred and fifty thousand dollar goal. So and, and they they're around three three fifty thousand when I, I was watching tech news today, uh, and they were talking about this story, and they started refreshing, and I saw it shoot up fifty thousand in like a few seconds. Yes, it was ridiculous because that that's when everybody it started hitting all the blogs, all the all the in gadgets and the gizmodos out there, and it just exploded. It, it's, I think a lot of people were looking for this or excited. It's still about going it. exactly. Um, I think one of the one of the like real killer things about this is that so if you look at their sponsor rates if you give them a hundred bucks you get an oh yeah exactly right exactly that's well it. it's a 99 dollar console yeah not just through the kickstarter that's what it's going to cost when it comes out right now what is it what is so uh, exciting about this, this oh yeah is a, a a game console where at least some portion of the games are absolutely free and this is based on Android. Yes, it's and an Android platform. Android components, I believe, is a Tegra processor right. in there. Um, it's going to be based on what it was an ice cream sandwich uh, or a modification of that. Yeah, it has uh, the Tegra three quad core processor, Giga RAM, eight gigs gigs of uh, flash storage, HDMI, uh, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, U USB wireless controllers and runs on ice cream comes with one controller for the 99 dollars yeah. 30 dollars for another one right minecraft is already signed on for this and i think is included with the system yes it, it is uh, they're free games to a point mm -hmm. where uh the initial playing of the game is free mm -hmm. whether the uh the developers allow you to uh sign up for something like if you have to subscribe to the game in order to play uh if you have, if it has in-game purchases, mm -hmm. or if there's a, so, a a further purchase to finish the game, so any form of freemium, yeah, so they want they want at least a free component for you to get into the game, correct? And uh, the system, like every other Android device in the world, is rootable. Mm -hmm. They they're encouraging this. What they're doing is they're giving indie game developers a gateway to the living room market that's otherwise hard to get into. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't have to go through the big guys anymore to put a legitimate video game out there for someone to play. Uh, it, it's, it's a teamwork, uh, effort. Uh, the, the, uh, I'm sorry, the designer of the company or the, the software is, uh, the same person that designed, the laptops that they use for the one laptop per child initiative where if you buy a laptop they mm -hmm. give a laptop mm -hmm. uh at that hundred dollar price mark so i mean everything is handled professionally as far as this goes yeah somebody that has a bit of uh you know doing interesting things in the industry for low cost uh, 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 but that's that's cool but their whole focus is taking back the tv Mm -hmm. And it really is. It's supposed to be uh, for developers. I guess it's not much for them to take something they've already developed on the Android, modify it a little bit right. to push it onto the TV. And I guess even the uh, controller has a touchpad on it for games that require that. Because right. obviously something like an Android phone, you know, much like the iPhone, there's a lot of touch play going on in there. Right. So, I mean, I guess imagine, I imagine like all those games where you have your like thumbstick and buttons on the screen that gets converted to the controller whatever development goes into that part. And I'm sure there's like some place in SDK has got to be like a pretty easy way to do it. So, Oh yeah. Uh, there's a leet price point. There. Yes, there is. We were talking about that before the show, <laughs> um, which uh, I, it, no, it, this whole system is kind of genius and it's, I wonder that it didn't happen sooner, mm -hmm. uh, and, mm -hmm. but I mean, they, they're pushing you to develop whatever you want for this console. Yeah. It, they yeah. want you to develop uh, new games, new hardware. And, and to a point, this isn't a new concept because we've seen Linux consoles before. They're saying, hey, developers, we want you to get into it. But they haven't been that attractive. I don't think they've been this cheap either. No. And they're not based on something that already has an installed base of people developing for it. Because now everybody that has, that's been developing already can go to the TV. And and for 100 bucks, yeah, I don't think you can beat it for somebody that just wants to you know play more casual games. Right. And I wonder if this is something that can also get built into like Google TVs later down the line too, since it is kind of a feels like it's kind of a lower end thing if it's android it can be adapted to anything that is compatible right so then brian you were you were checking this out you just you wanted to you wanted a pro version of this yeah i think eventually there will you know be 
I was going to anger Chachi and ask if there was an Angry Birds on it already, but... Uh, I don't that, think it'll take any time for there to be no, an Angry Birds on this thing. wouldn't take any time. It's already got Minecraft. Come yeah, on. that's true. <laughs> um, Infinity Blade, that would be awesome. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, yeah, yeah it, it definitely. I, I think there's definitely some value to it. I, Wait, let's you know. check the total. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 1.5. All right. <laughs> that is insane. No, I definitely uh, will probably be pledging as soon as I get home. Uh, you bought, you putting the whole hundred down? Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm considering it. I, well, I got 29 days to figure it out, right? Because you know it's I, going. I figure I'll get that. Uh, I'll get that sooner than I probably will my uh, Raspberry Pi. So <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, never mind. Uh, Raspberry Pi is a uh, small Linux computer. It's been back ordered for like three months because mine's I mine's supposed to ship in like a week. Oh, <laughs> so. <laughs> so wait, wait, what is this Raspberry Pi? Like, am I going to find? Wait, am I actually going to find it for Raspberry for search and Raspberry Pi? You should. Yeah, Pi, yeah. not Pie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pi. So, the, what is the Raspberry Pi then? It's. I don't want to say it's similar to this, but it, it, it's a it's a small you know computer. You can do you can do anything you really want with it. Learn learn to uh, you know program. You can you know have it run small applications. You can mod it. You, it it's a hobbyist. Thing and it's thirty bucks. Okay. Um, you know, one of the nice things would be to you know get it into the hands of, of kids and hook it up to a computer and have it you know program it to do certain things. And so this is know. like this is your enthusiast you enthusiast. It's like it's like how all the people that you hear are big. You know, these days said, "Well, I started on a Commodore sixty four yep. programming." This is the Commodore sixty four that you're going to get. You're going to start programming as like a twelve year old getting into computers. But now it's freaking thirty bucks. Thirty bucks to hey. get in and. Yeah, it might cost you an extra, you know, compact flash card. Uh, you know, hook it up yeah, to your and computer the, and where you the, go. Um, so it's, it's like the size of a credit card, which is something that's been available for a while, um, but you usually get it in like a case. Like I've got a few old Linux computers in my studio that are maybe like five years old. And they're the exact same size, but they don't have an HDMI out port, which is huge. Um, they don't have that much memory. And that cost like $80 at the time because it was a small company like five or six years ago. So they had to support it a little bit. It cost a lot more money. And the, the whole startup notion was just getting started. Whereas the Raspberry Pi guys, like they're not giving you anything more than the board. Yeah. There's no case. There's no cables. There's no nothing. You're getting the board. What's what makes a, it so cheap. Was this a Kickstarter a little bit ago? No. No? I okay. Because it looks familiar. So. I feel like, like, was there a buzz about this a few months ago? I think uh, there was a buzz like a year ago. Okay, because yeah. it looks familiar, actually. Hey, hey, here well, I there are there are a lot of things very similar to it. Just this one happened to yeah. kick off. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting, especially with this device. You know, obviously it's made to play video games. Uh, the more, you know, I think the more intriguing thing is going to be what else happens to this device? What other uses next to video games can this be used for? Uh, you know, there'd be probably a large percentage of people that will use it to play video games. And, you know, there might be this hobbyist or enthusiast type situation where, you know, people will, I don't know, mod it to do something else that's, you know, just as spectacular and takes off and, uh, you know, really goes from there. I think it's just that hobbyist enthusiast type, you know, entropy system that, you know, really helps them. I think I saw something similar to this. It's still where going. It was a, <laughs> it was like a sensor that you could program and tie into. Yeah, that, like there's a Kickstarter a little bit ago. Like it is that kind of concept. I, I yeah, I recall something similar to that. You could buy modules. You could buy like yeah, yeah. a temperature module. You could buy I forget what that was called because I looked into it, but that was a little bit more pricey, I believe. Like the base model, I forget what it was, but yeah, you could you know you could have a temperature module and it would tell you if your house got above a certain degree or yeah, you yeah. Know, like something, you know, something like that. Um, and yeah, I think that's really where, uh, you know, hopefully that, you know, people kind of get their starts to come up with the next, you know, thing, whatever it is. I and think. that's really cool. Cause this is a platform that if you just put this out there and said, okay, I want to sell this, you're not, it's going to be hard to find that community on it. But Kickstarter is a great place for these, yep. like really, that's a super niche thing for like you know like the, the, we got two of you here of course uh, to be like I want to tinker with a Linux machine like that that's just this they little they sold 12,023 <laughs> of them so far that yeah. was the other thing with the oh yeah they already have an install base of 12,000 yeah. of these things so why wouldn't you want I mean that's a pretty significant number to 
just drop Minecraft on, you know? It's been 12 hours! Yeah. <laughs> 12 hours. I think, well... They sold 12,000 in 12 hours. You think mm-hmm. they'll hit 100,000? I don't know. They have a month. Yeah, they have saying, more or less a month day, left. In 30 days. Because <laughs> the thing about 100,000 of these, and hopefully they uh, are done crapping their pants and saying, okay, how do we get 100,000 of these made? <laughs> uh, because you know that's a little bit what happened with Raspberry Pi because I didn't get in you know into it until it wasn't even that long like a couple weeks after you know the orders were taken and now you're waiting months and months for these things to get made and shipped out and, and unless you're uh, lucky they have one point like five billion dollars to do it exactly exactly well well even what they did they were smart with it because they do there's there was a ninety five dollar one they only had a thousand spots to be sure to be one of the first ones to get yeah. their console. And then the $99, $99 one, which has 9,000 backers, are said, well, you'll at least get it before you get it into stores. Yeah, that so, makes sense. However long that takes for them to get into retail channels and stuff, you know. But still, that's a pretty cool turnaround there. What do I get for 225 so, For 225 <laughs> Oh, that's all sold out. Oh, they'll etch yeah, your they'll, username oh, into it. Yeah. And there's like a certain level where they will etch your username in for every one they make. Yes. Why don't we give the, what is it? Two th- no, let's give the leak and then start a Kickstarter to get airfare to go out to the party. <laughs> <laughs> So let's speak it like speed that brings over another one. Chachi brought this up to me and it started a little bit of conversation on kick, about Kickstarter. Uh Penny Arcade is doing something interesting. Chachi, tell me what's going on there. Oh, yeah. Chachi is not a fan of this. Uh, Penny Arcade is asking people to help them quit their jobs. No, that's not entirely true. They're still doing their site. That's not a job. That's, that's, that's the explain, internet. Explain the Kickstarter before you start rallying. Uh, they want to raise uh, a quarter of a million dollars mm-hmm. uh, to run a ad-free penny arcade for a year. Yep. That's their lowest level. Their ultimate goal is $1.4 million. Yeah. Okay. With $1.4 million, they don't want to work anymore. <laughs> they yeah. wanna, They want to roll out of bed... Hop over to their computer desk, draw a, a, a an hour and a half long cartoon, post it, and then go smoke weed in the back room. That's what they want to well, yeah. do. So is that, isn't that the American dream now? It is. Yeah. But that's not what Kickstarter is for. What is well, Kickstarter to be for? fair, Kickstarter is for the purpose of raising money to make things happen. Fine. Not much Fine. more than that. Fine. You know what? I'm starting a Kickstarter. Okay. For $80,000... I'm not going to go to work anymore for a year. That's fine. If you can get people to pay you to yeah. do it, I mean, that's for, what it's For $80,000, I will become a full-time gamer and put all of my efforts into Insert Coin to begin. Yeah. And do all the big shows and yeah. do, go, go to the, like I said, go to Tokyo Game Show or whatever you need to, to right. cover games. $80,000 will cover uh, the salary that I get for a year for going to work. Which is not terribly significant. Right. Uh, so that makes sure that all of my bills and everything continue to be paid. Mm-hmm. And then the rest I use uh, to invest in uh, trips to, that all of the major game sites take. And to be fair, it's not that yeah, I, I, I quit my job and play video games. It's I, I quit my job and you basically funded insertcointobegin.com right. getting somewhere in the next year. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'll record the video. It'll be posted. $80,000 is Why not? Goal. Why not? You can see. Actually, you, you know what? Maybe no. you'll be surprised and it actually I changed happens. that. I changed that. What? $70,000 is my goal. Okay. If I get $80,000, I'll donate the last ten. I You might want to watch with that. That can get a little hairy yeah. with the donation side, no, I think. It's fine. I think there's... Uh, they, well, you have to read the rules. But uh, well, if you're wrong, Kickstarter will just deny it anyways. So. You can put it up on Indiegogo. And anybody who... Uh, if you do donations, as long as no individual donates more than $12,000, all of that is non-taxable. There you go. So there you go. There's your inside scoop. No so. need to hire a lawyer now. Right. <laughs> and an accountant. Fine. Pay me eighty thousand dollars so I don't have to go to work anymore. And ten thousand for charity. Yeah. Yeah. And ten thousand will go to charity. That's not bad. That's not bad. Seventy thousand dollars. I will stay home and play video games, mm-hmm. and update the website, mm-hmm. and occasionally take a trip to some video game conference. There you go. 
Right? Laying it down. 80,000. Right here. You pledge this. This thing's going up. Yeah. No no BS. No, we're done. All it's right. It's going to happen. All right. Um, there you go. There you have They're it. They're at $1,534,000. <laughs> we do. Every other refresh, it goes up. Yeah. Yeah. Someone just donated. Bell. Someone just donated two dollars. Yeah. <laughs> well, they took. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go on. Um, no, no problem. No problem. I just want to touch base on this one real quick before we go out. This has been kind of ooh, a little bit of discussion again. We were having last night in the hangout. Uh, so uh, Twitter. Uh, I don't know if we talked about it on here. Twitter has been kind of. Uh, uh, saying they're going to pull a lot of stuff from their API. LinkedIn already backed off from using it. Um, it looks like some of the other guys that we use might be in trouble. Um, and I think this is why. Um, let me see if I can find that. There it is. Uh, Twitter Twitter API is going to start being a walled garden, says this article over on The Verge. Um, and I think we're already seeing it with the update that they had today uh, for the Twitter app for iOS and Android, where you're starting to see more stuff like you can take video in the application, you know, something we would have gone to one of these other services for. I mean, this is stuff we've been seeing for a while, but, um, and, and we've been hearing about them wanting to get a little more complicated with stuff like, you know, the Wall Street Journal, I think is one of them that can do uh, headlines as opposed to all the same text. We were seeing, we talked about the NASCAR search hashtag page that's started to come up. Uh, do you think this is, well, one, is this kind of a betrayal to their developers that kind of got them here? And am I going to have to dish Hootsuite because it's not going to be compatible anymore? When you live and die when somebody else is API, that's the price you pay. And that is. I mean, how many I mean, people there's no, there's no other way to get around you it. You're I mean, getting all poetic. That's right, man. When it comes to APIs, that's right. Smack uh, it down. To address John in the chat room, it's over on their website. It's uh, penny-arcade.com. Yeah, I really nice. just, just uh, if you search Penny Arcade Kickstarter, it comes right up. Yeah. Uh, same with the, the Uya. Well, the Uya is over, linked over at insertcoinbegin.com if you want to check it out. I, I'm, I'm just going to completely just say the oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For the but uh, but yeah, so I mean, is this is this going to change the way? Like, if if you start like, who uses Twitter itself? Like their app and everything amongst us. I use the web page. Um, That's it. I don't. Use I the use their page. OSX app. Use their OSX. Okay. He is, uses the web page. My wife, I know, uses the the straight up app for it. Uh, Brian, what do you use over there? I don't even use the web page. I I use uh, Tweetbot. Uh, mm -hmm. AJ's suggestion, yep. by the way. Walking through, walking through the shot. Yep. Nice, yep. nice, fantastic. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, I very rarely use the uh, Twitter page in and of itself. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a few things I do on that that I have to. The only place I can do it is on there. Uh, approve requests and that kind of junk. And, and there's so many functions. Like I, I use Hootsuite because I can do things like schedule posts. Right. You know that 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 should be time released for whatever reason. And and there's a lot of great stats packages in there that I don't think you can even get through Twitter. Although I'm sure there's some kind of business account that'll do that kind of thing with them that they're offering to the higher end people. It just uh, it, 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 if they start you know pulling the rug out for, up from under these other things, I think it's going to kill a lot of people being on there. Yeah, I mean, I think for the general population, I think, how should I say this? I've seen some of the extremes. If you accidentally click on a hashtag and you get into that other area of Twitter, which I'm like, oh, my God. What? <laughs> yeah. Like, there's like this, the seedy underbelly of Twitter? Yeah. Or, there's, or, just, there's, yeah. I, I don't want to insult anybody. It just, it, there's this, there's all these other people that use Twitter for all other social reasons. And it's really weird. <laughs> um, but uh, those people will not be affected. Um, okay. Cause there are definitely they're... Are going to be technical people who are either trying to promote a business or mm -hmm. themselves or, you know, their own brand marketing that, yeah, they're going to be affected by this potentially, uh, you know, and then, you know, some people will get pissed off and, you know, there might be a, Hey, let's roll our own Twitter or, you know, like a status.net or, you know, a service like that where, uh, you know what? It's not going to cost me much to put it up in the cloud, roll my own and Hey, Pittsburgh people, let's, uh, let's all get on here and we don't have to worry about, you know, <laughs> Twitter changing stuff or, yeah. you know, that yeah, kind of yeah. I mean, that's always, I mean, there's somebody trying to do that with, uh, with Facebook when yeah. they got started. Yeah, they Facebook, never know. How, did, how did that work out? You know, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I think I, I'd be interested to see the numbers, how many people are actually using Twitter's thing that they already suck a lot of life out of and say, you know, the alternative map app market. I mean, yeah. it seems like they bought a lot of their audience when they bought up 
a lot of those apps there yeah. were probably like hey we're officially the twitter app just go download that if you enjoyed our product you know uh you know be it, what, what was it uh i keep forgetting which uh, one twitter used to be that they bought i don't even but uh you know and that seemed to be that terrific Twitterific, mm-hmm. and that seemed yeah. to be one of the bigger ones. I think I, I think I even used it like way back yeah. in the day. A ton of people used it. Yeah, so you already absorbed that audience, and maybe people are like, "Well, I might as well use that." Because I mean, you know, even with something like Hoots- Tweet Deck, I hear people complain about it all the time. Which actually, that got bought by them, didn't it? And it, I thought I don't remember. I think no, got, I don't. I don't think Tweet Deck no? got bought. Because well, that's either way, that's one that people keep bitching about every time they they update it. Um, so they're, they're this, like the best metaphor to take with all this stuff is is like it's not really complicated because it's a startup and an application. It's complicated because it's one group of people trying to cater to the needs of another group of people that they're giving something for free. So you consider like hypothetically a free event you may have thrown in the past, and how many times we've said to ourselves things like, "Well, realistically, the only way to ship." this whatever this thing is is to stop listening to what people want and to do what we think is right yeah and nobody's ever like you're never gonna please everybody it's it's the same racket over and over again so as far as i'm concerned twitter is still a free service i'm not paying for it i therefore am in no way a shareholder they can do whatever the heck they want and if you were somebody depending on twitter for making your money and making your living on their api then maybe you needed something else Going on. Yeah, then it so. then it goes back to uh, uh, you know the whole you can't you can't uh, you can't be renting your bread truck and running a bread business. At some point, somebody's going to want their truck back. Exactly. There you go. And Twitter just recalled their truck. All right, guys, we got to get out of here. We got to talk about some more video games here on the Let's Play with Insert Coin to Begin dot com. Uh, Brian, thanks for joining us here in studio. Oh no, it's fun. It's great. So. I always, I always like to have actually an, having an actual person here, and I have to worry about uh, uh, Skype, uh, you know, and people bumping the cameras and uh, and, and the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, he's over at at Dab of Tech on Twitter, of course. Anything else you need to put there? Check. Yeah. No, back up your computers, run your security updates. Oh, geez, seriously. Dab and check. What? At, at a client. Yeah, yeah. I had somebody that had stuff on one drive that was like their whole life, and uh, that was a very sad day. I thought I almost gave her a heart attack. Uh, Rob De La Creta, RobJDLC.com, when he's not yeah. saving the downtown Pittsburgh area from spider attacks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we need to hear from that and Chachi uh, we'll turn his mic up is with us again insert coin to begin dot com at Chachi says look out for that kickstarter he's going to start here shortly uh, it's, it's not a joke I'm starting it he's doing it why not yeah. uh, that's why I mean, that was the thing with kickstarter hey you know he was at, you're, you're asking me out back you know if we we should if you should do this and I'm like why the F not? Yeah. What's going to stop you? I'm not going to. Worst gonna... thing that happens is they <laughs> I, don't approve uh, you yeah. worst... or you don't make it yeah. because nobody else thought it was a good idea. Worst thing that happens is I continue to wake up and go to my career that I don't <laughs> mind. There you go. There you go. It's not an escape. No. It's a let's see if this happens. Right. And I, I think that's a I think that's a good throw crap at the wall thing that hey, Kickstarter is good for. If I can take a year off and work on this and yeah. get this off the ground, why not? Go live the dream. I'll do it. I'll roll out of bed. What were some of the prizes you had in mind? Uh, for, I think I said for $10, if you, uh, if you, if you support it for $10, you will receive a handwritten thank you card. Uh, <laughs> I will, I will handwrite handwritten. each and every one of them. Oh man. Um, and cramps. Yes. <laughs> you like type it uh, on the computer and uh, print it out? No. Oh, okay. Uh, I will handwrite it. You will wow. get my terrible handwriting. Hey, dude, thanks a lot. Each one will say, love, Chachi. <laughs> and they'll get shorter as it goes, <laughs> as it goes. Um, Less X's and uh, O's. For, for $45 or $50, um, you'll get a t shirt that says, I helped Chachi take a year off from work. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and then. Uh, let's see. What else was there? Um, it was like a, a for for you- like five hundred dollars. Uh, you can come over and play a game of your choice in person with me. I think we talked about like we would film it and like yeah. make it a series or right. something. Right. It, it would it would all like be documented side. and filmed and everything. Which I think is a great series, probably for Insert Coin. Right. So. And then uh, 
<laughs> Riz says that's a bargain. And then for, for <laughs> 2000 or so, like $2,500, uh, you can come over, play a game of your choice, and I will lose. <laughs> So you can fix it for uh, right I, for twenty five hundred dollars. You can beat me a game of your choice. There you go. So I mean, uh, if you want me to lose that Super Mario Brothers so story, so if you want to beat Chachi at Barbie's Pony uh, ride, <sighs> yes. Oh. There you go. Yep. There you go. Twenty five hundred dollars documented on the internet. What about a weekend of gaming? What would that cost me? Oh man, a whole weekend. A whole weekend. You mean like it, it depends on if there's sleep. Uh-huh. Like we'll would it be like a, would it be like a gaming sleepover? I don't know. We like just, I, I bring all my stuff over to your place yeah, and sleep on your game. couch. Jam a party, game and drink beer. I think we could do that for like five grand. Okay, for like I'm five sure. grand, I, I will bring over. Uh, I'll bring over a system of your choice and sleep on your couch. There you go. <laughs> uh, real quick, John John has in the chat room. Uh, he says uh, Rooster Teeth works on sponsor. They uh, that's what the uh, kick or they the. It's like it's like Kickstarter, uh, and it's to get fans to support them and not have ad bars on the side. Uh, Kevin Smith did that kind of thing with Red State, right? Uh, mm. I don't know. No, no, he, he did a private. He, he just went down a different avenue. Yeah, he that, found, that was more direct to consumer. He found uh, a person that owned a clothing store. No, this, this is all true. He found a person that owned a clothing store that wanted to get into the movie industry. To, <laughs> so they funded it to back his. And then movie. he went in, but the, but then he did like yeah. the movie tour with the Q and A, and he put it straight on straight to on demand instead of going to theaters. Then went to theaters, right? He, uh, did have a limited release. So I mean, there was like it was it was more a different strategy, I think, than a fan supported thing. Right. I mean, the fans supported it by being consumers of the product, but, right? But it was just a different than the usual thing. Um, hey, I'm Sorg. I'm Mike Sorg. Sorg, what do you have going on? I got, you I got a Kickstarter. You have a Kickstarter? Uh, go check that out. SteelCityStartups.com is the short link to that. Uh, we uh, already have a, little, a few backers here. We got plenty. Of, we got, we're only less than a week into this thing. Uh, I want to do a show for... Uh, for uh, startups, you know, just kind of, kind of like what we've been doing for uh, nonprofit news. I want to do it, uh, you know, interview some people around Pittsburgh, oh, no. get some exposure. Chachi's making a mess over there. I tried to throw my empty Gatorade bottle. Into also, the check out Sorgatron.com. Recycling bin, and it didn't go. <laughs> Sorgatron.com. Uh, I've been playing with iMovie on the iPhone. Yes, you have. That's been my kind of. Hey, let's see what we can do with this. So, uh, so go check that out. Just some uh, some playing around stuff there, um, and uh, of course check everything else out. Awesomecast.com. Contact at awesomecast.com. Tweet us at awesomecast on Facebook on the uh, the the Google Plus. That's the thing I'm thinking about. Wheels is over there in the in the hangout hanging out. I lost the thing. I don't know why that died. Anyways, um, so uh, and we're here live every Tuesday at 7 every p.m. Tuesday. Eastern. Except for like three a year. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Well, more or less. Chances right. are you will find us here. Yes. At live.sorgatronmedia.com. Live.sorgatronmedia.com. Thanks a lot to our awesome chat room. You've been bumping all night. Thanks. You are our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Uh, Nick Cage. Crazy! <laughs> Crazy. Oh, Nick Cage. I forgot it was there, and he turned around. And I started laughing again. <laughs> I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> hey, don't worry, I'm gonna make it go away. <laughs> Even the preview is hilarious. <laughs> oh man, let's see what that looks like. That is a great idea. <laughs> oh man, tiled. Oh! <laughs> There's so many Nick Cage looking at me with his crazy eyes. I don't know which eyes to focus look, on. Look, look, look. Holy nah. shit. <laughs> so many of them. <laughs> I'm not actually going to say anything during this episode. I'm just going to sit here and eat cookies the whole time. All right. That's constructive.
please do so in the mi- in the microphone. Thank you. Oh yeah. Oh man, Rob, already. <laughs> That's funny. Our cookies so good. Yeah. <laughs> Was it about the Higgs boson? Um, it wasn't about the Higgs boson. Um, it was it was about the Planck force. The what? <laughs> the Planck force. <laughs> You're making that So, up. if you... The way this works is uh, a Newton in weight is roughly the weight of an average apple. Okay. 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 So, so I was uh, building a, a robot thing, um, which I have a video of, but uh, I didn't send it to you, so it's probably not very useful. Uh, anyway, I'm making a, an, an autonomous desk lamp thing. So, I needed to order in a linear actuator. I needed to familiarize myself with uh, how many... Uh, Newtons of force were required to make a thing move, so I ended up looking up Newtons and learning about Newtons. And in the list of forces, um, there's the Planck force, which is uh, named after uh, a man with the name of Planck, P-L-A-N-C-K. And Planck's translates into Newtons, and so Newtons translates into apples. So I said, you know, because the Planck force has a, a direct relation to its 10 to the 44th power of newton so if it's 10 to the 44th power of newtons then it's 10 to the 44th power of the average weight of an apple or 1.042 times 10 to the 42nd power in bushels right nobody laugh just me i think it's funny i don't care <laughs> math hurts my head a whole nother level. That is a whole other level. All right, let's do a show, huh? You are nerdy beyond compare. Yeah, yeah. Nerd. You, you just out nerded. I think all of us here. Nerd. <laughs> Congratulations. Woo. Nerd. Yeah. Nerd. Getting nerd out. Gonna rub my nerd all over your face. All over. All over. Or something. Nerds. All right. Uh, yeah, we're recording. Sure, we're recording. Just get your nerd on. Whip like your nerd out. Here. Chachi's tweeting. Sir coin, how do you know? Because I have it on my phone. Oh, right. Chachi, I sent you a thing. Did you get the thing? I did, and I laughed. Okay. My guess is the thing wasn't about physics. No. Nope. No. It was Buddy Christ. And it said, hey, need an arc? I know a guy. (laughs) 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 <laughs> oh now that was a funny uh, joke. That was uh, a good way to start the show. Uh, it's gonna be a good one. I know a guy. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat>